My hair is super oily. Howdy y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm actually like wearing a PJ shirt and it's making me just want to take a nap right now. TBH. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another hair video for you guys. I want to be getting more hair stuff on my channel. Um, I own a hair color company, so it kind of makes sense. Today's video is sponsored by IGK. Thank you so much for partnering with me again. I love partnering with IGK. They make amazing hair products that truly work. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with this video. I have been wanting to do a video on this topic because it gets asked on Twitter at least eight times a day, if not more, and multiple times throughout comments on Instagram. This is how do you change your hair color so often? This question is a burning question. You guys ask this very often. Um, and I do have some secrets about how I change my hair color as often as I do and how I get back to this um, and ha basically have a fresh slate. So this video is all gonna change somewhat soon though. Uh, well, not a portion of it, I should say. Um, hair color removal will be so much easier once the Arctic Fox color remover comes out. If you're like, whoa, what is she talking about? I need to know about it right now. You can check out the link in the description box below, but one of the last videos I did, I was actually testing our sample um, hair color remover. So that will be exciting, but we'll hop right on into this. One thing that plays a giant role in being able to change your hair color somewhat often is maintaining the integrity and health of your hair as much as you possibly can. Because if you're like me, you color your hair every color under the sun, whether that's semi-permanent, demi-permanent, etc., and it takes a toll on your hair. So if you were doing all of that and not caring for your hair in the ways that I'm gonna go over before we go into the nitty gritty of how I actually remove color, um, you're gonna end up with very broken, damaged, thin hair that's really not gonna hold any color at all. So it's really important to maintain the integrity of your hair and the health of your hair. And there's a lot you can do to help your hair with that. So I'm gonna go over a couple things that I like to, um, you know, make sure that I am taking into consideration throughout like every week, basically taking care of my hair. So let's get into that. The number one thing on my list um, to help maintain the health and integrity of your hair is stop washing it so much. Do not wash your hair every single day, lady. Like you need to <laughs> let some of the natural oils soak into your hair. And then when it gets a little too oily, use your favorite dry shampoo. Um, washing your hair every day is very drying and can be very damaging for your hair. So um, with that being said, I'm gonna go over one of my favorite dry shampoos. This is the IGK First Class Dry Shampoo. One reason, okay, you gotta shake this really well before you use it. One reason I love this is because it's a heavy duty dry shampoo. It's not just like, oh, when your hair's like kind of oily. No, this is big guns. It, it works with a little bit of oil. It works with a lot of oil. It also helps eliminate odor from your hair, which is awesome because if you don't wash your hair for like five days, it can get a little stinky. So. This is also awesome for after your workout session, if you're going to work or what have you, and you wanna avoid washing your hair every day, this will help really pull the oil out of your hair. It'll cleanse your hair. One really cool trick is you can actually put this stuff in your hair before you go to sleep and let it do its magic. And when you wake up, your um, styling time will be like cut in half, uh, if not more. And so this is just really like, obviously my hair is a little bit greasy today, so I'm gonna be going in with this as well and show you guys how I use it. This stuff also provides UV protection, which, which is really good um, for your hair because that's also super damaging and something that can harm your hair. Um, this also has, what is it? It's white tea white tea powder, it soothes your scalp and strengthens the hair follicle, which is always great. So in order to use this, you're gonna shake this really well. It's already like becoming matte before my eyes. It smells so good. So it takes about 30 seconds for the cleansing powders to like activate and start working. So I'm just gonna go around and get this throughout my hair. That's a really good hair look right there. What do you guys think? 
So this is something, like I said, that you can just like pop in your hair real quick before you go to sleep if you know you're gonna have an early morning or you've got like a lot of dirt to absorb. So after you let that sit for about 30 seconds, you can massage this into your hair, brush it out. I mean, look at that. It's like literally all the oil has been absorbed. You wanna make sure that um, if you have uh, darker hair that you are massaging your scalp and working all of the white powder into your hair. Obviously I don't have a whole lot to worry about because my hair is platinum, but if you do have darker hair and you see some white powder, don't worry, it's, it's not like there for good. All you have to do is keep working this into your hair, which is going to make the product work even better. Um, so yeah, as you can see, like all the oil is gone. Dry shampoo is your best friend if you're maintaining hair color or you are trying to keep the health of your hair um, so that you can change your hair color often. I will also link this in the description box below if you guys would like to check this out. I highly, highly recommend this. Um, it's also amazing for traveling because I know when I'm traveling and I'm doing shoots or whatever, or like have back to back to back, um, hotel shampoo isn't always gonna cut it, so I really try not to wash my hair very much, and dry shampoo is like my savior. Next on my list to preserving your hair's health, if you are going to wash your hair, and when you do, make sure you are using a strengthening hair um, shampoo and conditioner also. Do not skip on hair masks. Hair masks make a world of difference when it comes to um, fortifying your hair, keeping it healthy. There are hair masks for literally everything you can imagine out there, moisturizing, um, volumizing, but make sure you get a hair mask that is super moisturizing. Your hair is literally going to drink it up. So do not skip on hair masks. You can actually sleep in your hair masks. I really like to kind of work them into the ends of my hair. Um, and then I will sleep in it. I'll put like some sort of a wrap on my hair or bandana or whatever, or I'll do it like at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon, let it dry a bit and then just go to sleep with my hair like that on a little bun on top of my head, like a loose bun. You don't want tight buns that will pull your hair out. But um, hair masks are a great way to moisturize, hydrate um, and protect your hair and just like, keep it healthier for longer. I will link you guys to some of my favorite hair masks below in the description box as well in case you guys wanna check some of those out. Another version of a hair mask is Arctic Fox hair color. If you are coloring your hair um, and you're not afraid to get it on your pillows or you have some sort of a hair wrap, you can actually leave Arctic Fox hair color in your hair. It is extremely hydrating. It's got a wonderful conditioning base. So you can actually leave this in your hair for as long as you'd like. It does not damage your hair at all. It actually does quite the opposite. One thing, as you've noticed, um, I have been taking, I almost kicked over my trash can. One thing you might notice is I haven't been wearing um, extensions lately. Like for instance, I don't have my tape and extensions in right now. Um, that is because I'm trying to regain the strength and health of my hair. So, which I've done qu quite well actually. I was looking at it last night down. I was like, wow, my hair is actually growing. It feels so much more full. Um, I have been taking a break from tape and extensions and just using clip-ins. So you can get a little clip-in piece like this and you can feel more yourself. Um, but definitely do clip in or temporary tape extensions and just put them in when you're going out because I started to realize I'm like, honestly, I don't go out very often. I sit in this room and talk to you guys and talk to you guys on Instagram stories more than I even go out and have a life. So um, if you're anything like me, you're probably only like doing your hair and styling it maybe a couple times a week and then the rest of the time it's up in a bun or something. So uh, that is so relief, that's such a relief for your hair not to hold on to heavy hair extensions. So rely on clip-ins, whatnot. It'll be a lot less damaging for your hair in the long run. Another thing is um, adding a UV protectant to your hair. This will do that for you if you use this. Um, but if you're not, it's a day where you're not using dry shampoo, which I don't know what day that is because I literally put dry shampoo in my hair like every day because it texturizes it as well. But um, definitely use a UV protectant and a heat protectant in your hair. So if you're gonna be styling it or you're going to be going out in the sun, um, heat is very, very damaging to your hair. Uh, actually recently, which leads me to my next point, Make sure you check the temperature on your blow dryer as well as your curling iron because recently my curling iron was defaulting to 450 degrees and I had absolutely no idea. And I was like, why is my hair not getting any longer? I've had these extensions out for a little while now. And 
I noticed that my curling iron was defaulting to such a high temperature that I was literally frying my hair off at the ends and it was just falling off. So keep that in mind. I try and keep my curling iron to no hotter than 300 degrees. I also um, rarely use heat on my hair. I've been letting my hair air dry a lot or using like the cool setting or the super warm, like low heat setting on my blow dryer and just doing my hair that way and not really brushing through it while it's wet with a brush either. This is really gonna help your hair spring back from the dead, no heat on your hair or as little as possible Please. I didn't realize that my lipstick was like half off. So <laughs> excuse me, let me just fix this so it doesn't look ridiculous. Once again, you guys didn't have my back. Nobody said anything. Nobody said anything. Oh, there we go. Now into the actual hair color removal process and how I do this the healthiest way possible. A lot of people remove their hair color by straight up putting bleach on their hair or a color remover that is essentially just bleach. This is extremely damaging for your hair and I'm assuming you're watching this video because you have delicate hair that you want to care for and you wanna make sure that your hair is staying as healthy as possible throughout the transition to a different color. So yeah, um, basically this is my method of fading my hair color out in a healthy way. On the flip side of using dry shampoo, if I'm trying to remove color from my hair, I will start taking a warm or warm to hot shower, uh, sometimes up to twice a day, and I will use a super clarifying shampoo on my hair. Um, you can use, I really like Lush, uh, the Lush um, Juicy Shampoo. This is a clarifying shampoo, or you can just use Head and Shoulders. It's very like kind of abrasive shampoo. I would try and stay away from using dish soap. I see a lot of people use this in their hair, but it's just not, it's not great for your hair. Um, so it's just like a step below what we wanna be doing. You wanna at least do Head and Shoulders or a clarifying shampoo. So the hot water is gonna help um, the, uh, the... <laughs> the hot water helps um, the hair shaft open up a little bit. I don't know why I can't think of what I'm trying to say, but basically um, when your hair is hot, it expands a little bit and the um, color molecules will be rinsed away because to understand this whole process, I guess I should explain semi-permanent color. Um, the hair molecules are too large to actually penetrate your hair shaft. So what they do is they kind of stick on the outside of your hair and they act as a stain. So the more that you wash your hair, more of those molecules are removed, which causes a co hair color fade. So the more you're washing it and the more clarifying shampoo you're using, you're stripping your hair of more of those molecules and the lighter and lighter your color is going to get. So that is one reason why I will take a few shower, a couple, I shouldn't say a few, I've never taken three showers in one day. Um, sometimes if I'm really, really trying to get the hair color out of my hair quickly, I will take two showers a day and wash my hair with hot water. And each time I do that, I use a really nice hair mask so my hair can regain some of the hydration that it's losing by using some of the more abrasive shampoos like clarifying shampoo. There are two more things that I will do um, with my hair to help fade out color. Um, I will blow dry it on hot, but use a heat protectant. Um, heat, heat basically removes color from your hair. So even with the heat protectant, it's still removing a bit of the color. So I'll do that a little bit more depending on how my hair is feeling um, while using hair masks still, of course. And another thing is going out in the sun. Sun is going to help remove some of your hair color. Again, it really depends on the health of your hair because like I said before, UV rays do damage and can damage your hair. So you just have to be careful and kind of use your best judgment with like what you wanna do with your hair. One of the fastest things that I find that helps remove hair color too, other than um, washing it a couple times a day with clarifying shampoo is getting in the pool or getting in the ocean. Getting in the pool in the ocean for whatever reason, remove hair color like nobody's business. So I would start there if you have access to the pool or the ocean, hop in there, get your hair in there, and you will you will definitely see your hair color starting to fade out. Um, of course, there are more stubborn hair colors like greens and reds that are a little bit more difficult to get out, but you can get the majority of them out using the methods that I've talked about in this video. And that is basically exactly how I change from color to color. Um, it's as simple as that. It really just comes down to kind of being patient. Usually this is kind of like a, 
two to three, two to four week process for me where I'm letting it fade out. And during that time, I will put some wigs on. Um, so you can definitely find some inexpensive wigs or expensive wigs, whatever you want to kind of hide that like faded hair color look. I always use Arctic Fox for my hair color and all of our hair color fades out on spectrum and I always start with a pretty light base. So it's usually a pretty process. It's not typically an ugly hair color that it's fading out to, depending on what I had underneath. But yeah, typically it's a two to four week process. So it's you're just gonna have to be patient with your hair. Um, and you know, if, if you want hair to be stuck in your head at the end of it, you're gonna have to be patient with it and nurture it and help it through this process. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found this useful. Let me know what hair color you guys think I should do next. I was reading your comments on my Instagram post and you guys have some really good ideas. I have some oily hair back here I didn't get. Thank you guys so much for watching. We will see you in the next video. And once again, um, there are some hair products that you might wanna check out if you care about the health of your hair listed in the description box below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.